This is the Kingdom Movement Podcast, a place where we will explore through conversation how discipleship, theology, and community really can transform our world. Hey guys, this is Jake, back with another episode of the Kingdom Movement Podcast. Today's topic that we're going to explore is how to grow in faith. So I think all of us um, who take faith or discipleship uh, to Jesus seriously want an answer to this question, right? We want to know what are some practical ways, what are some um, things that we can put into practice that can help us grow in our faith to, to become more like Jesus to, to grow in our love for Him and to shape our lives to look more like Him. And so today, just going to talk about some, you know, simple but um, hard sometimes to practice concepts and ideas and practices that we can begin to implement in our lives that will help us to, to take seriously this idea of growing in our faith and our discipleship to Jesus. So kind of the analogy I wanted to start out with was this idea of like exercise. So if any of you have ever attempted to do physical exercise, you're wanting to get in shape, maybe it's for you wanted to start running a marathon, or you wanted to basically just get stronger or make your physique look better, whatever it is, uh, there is a great analogy that I've heard, and I believe John Mark Comer and others have used it, where it talks about like, currently as you are, if you've never run a marathon before, if you've never attempted that or never have gotten up and ran on a regular basis you just want to start running randomly one day you are not the kind of person you could not wake up tomorrow and you physically would not be able to run a marathon you couldn't that's you you would not be able to do that that's not the person that you are but that doesn't mean that you are incapable of running a marathon Uh, and little by little through a training regimen by running one mile at the start and slowly advancing that to two to three to four, five, six, and so on over an amount of time, you can actually become the kind of person that can run a marathon. And just like going to the gym, um, if you want to become stronger, you currently are not someone who can, you know, bench press. Uh, sorry, I gotta switch to kilometers here. Ninety kilometer or kilometers, uh, kilograms. Uh, but over time, as you progress and you work and you show up, you can. And I think in the same way, our faith takes exercise. It takes practice. It takes discipline. It takes obedience. But the more consistent, not the monumental, not the I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and you know in our maybe church language, be a super spiritual giant, Um, you know, get a thousand people saved or know how to have a great prayer time or be able to read my Bible for three hours in a day and just love it. Um, Most of us think and act as though the Holy Spirit's going to zap us, lightning bolt us into superheroes of faith, right? But when we look around, we often don't see those kinds of people. And in our own lives, We often struggle to find consistency, much like someone who wants to exercise but is unwilling to to put the discipline in, right? So, like, the example would be a lot of us live our, our spiritual lives, our discipleship to Jesus, sort of like this. We get up one day a week, we go to the gym for 30 minutes, and then for the rest of the week, We spend it eating junk food, doing whatever we want, um, snacking, eating ice cream every night, and then, you know, laying on the couch or taking a three-hour long nap. And then when we wake up, you know, three weeks later and we've gained 15 pounds of fat, not muscle, we turn around and we're angry at God because we weren't the kind, we don't, it didn't work, right? We, we don't look any better. In fact, maybe we look even worse than we did before. And we blame it on the gym or we blame it in 
our spiritual walk on God, that he didn't help us or didn't turn us into the kind of person that, you know, is able to resist temptation or able to overcome anger or bitterness or unforgiveness. But the reality is, is that Jesus has given us the roadmap, the life in which to live, to practice, to submit to, um, in order to become the kind of person that becomes more like him. He, he's laid that out clearly in his word. And oftentimes we get mad at God or the Holy Spirit, when in reality we have not been willing to put in to practice what God has given us as an example of what it means to be um, the kind of person that experiences his flourishing life. And so that's kind of what I want to explore today is like that idea of really in the long run, how do we become the kinds of people that are shaped after Jesus? And I think a huge, huge aspect of that and something that I had to really kind of relearn over my journey of following Jesus is consistent practice. So meaning consistently doing something each day. So practice or habits, whatever term you want to use, end up having an accumulatory effect on your heart, on your mind, on your thoughts, on what you consume, what your conscience kind of compass points you towards, what you choose to avoid and what you choose to embrace or consume. And so consistent practices, meaning for me, what that has ended up looking like is every morning for about 45 minutes to an hour, spending time in prayer and reading the Bible. And that used to be really hard. I remember up until probably anywhere from six to seven years ago, I was kind of the person who, you know, I got up, maybe I said a prayer, I read a couple of verses on my phone uh, as I set my alarm hit snooze about five times and woke up, you know, five minutes before I needed to get ready. And then at night, I would usually say a prayer and fall asleep <laughs> before I was even done with the prayer. And that, and then I would go to church on Wednesday nights and Sundays. And that was essentially my spiritual life. Like I did read the Bible in maybe different spaces, but it wasn't consistent. It wasn't thought out or methodical of this is what I want to get out of this space. It was very random. It was very throwing in a dart, hoping something sticked. Maybe I would open my Bible and it would give me the answer that I needed. And that kind of spiritual development and faith, like it just didn't cut it. And I ended up making a lot of really poor choices kind of in my youth during that time. Because in reality, you know, I had the heart, I had the desire, I had the passion to want to follow God, but my practice, what I was actually doing didn't align with the desire I had to want to grow in God. And so my practices produced a kind of fruit, and it was a very anemic, weak, um, very moldable moldable by the world Christian who was willing to consume things that were very much not in line with God's word, was able to be tempted in ways that I feel not that... uh, I'm totally immune to, but I'm able to resist in a radically different way than I could before Um, I made these kind of dramatic changes in my life. But it was when I started getting consistent, when I really started to create intentional, regular space with God in the morning um, and really had a thoughtful game plan of what that would look like, what I desired in that space, wanting to hear from God, it began to create opportunities for me to hear God in a new way, to hear his voice, and it it helped me engage him in a radically different way, even throughout my day. And obviously there's seasons and times where I've had to revisit and re-examine, but I had that space created in my daily rhythms to do that. And that space became the place where I could process before God, where I could examine my heart before God, I could reflect on the things that I wasn't doing well before him. And so it became a very, very helpful space Um to create uh, a place of consistency. So that is number one, consistency. Just like the gym, if you want to get stronger, just like training for a marathon, you have to be consistent in your training or in your practice or in your habits if you want to become the kind of person um, that can run a marathon, that can bench 90 kilograms or look more like Jesus. The second one that I would say is doing the work. So what that means is, um, there are times in our lives where it's like, 
inconsistency in habit. I think the reason why maybe we've shot away from that in the church is sometimes we feel like it feels forced. It feels um, not uh, maybe emotionally led. I don't feel like doing it today, so I shouldn't do something that I don't feel like doing, right? But really, I would say that that is nowhere in Scripture does it talk about faithfulness to God being based on how we feel. And in fact, it talks about the deceitfulness of our hearts and our emotions and our desires and how really all of those things are meant to submit under the authority of Jesus. And so really doing the work, as I have written in my notes, really is just all about showing up even when we aren't into it, even when we don't feel it, even when we've done two weeks of devotion time in the morning and it just feels like, God, where are you? Consistently showing up, consistently doing the work that is necessary to to grow will produce results. Just again, you know, the gym analogy just keeps coming to my mind. There are moments in my own life where it's like going to the gym becomes easy, it becomes enjoyable, it becomes fun, and I can see like that I'm getting stronger, but there are plateau moments too where it feels like you've just hit a wall and um, you don't feel like anything's moving or happening but it's in those moments that it's the most important to stick with what you're doing and I think in my faith journey if there's one thing that I've really realized is the consistent faithfulness of Jesus and how if I am just willing to show up if I am willing to just make myself available even when I don't feel like it in the midst of all the craziness of life even in the midst of hard things Jesus has shown up, has provided, has made a way time and given direction time and time and time and time again, where it's just I've come to the place through the very dry seasons of my life, experience that Jesus is faithful. And really, it's by experiencing those dry seasons and seeing Jesus's faithfulness, I've been able now to experience on the other end how Even in those seasons when I feel that way, I know what's coming. I know that Jesus is making a way. I know that there's something on the other side that I can't see right now that maybe he's wanting to grow in me, weed out of me, or help me to see that he is the only one that can make a way in this situation. So whatever it is, doing the work, showing up, even when we don't feel like it, putting in the effort to make space for God, like that is how we grow, right? The third point that I wanted to kind of talk about is inviting the Holy Spirit. So something that I personally have wanted to get better at is inviting the Holy Spirit throughout my day. So sometimes when we create that consistent space, we have to have it. I'm not saying that we shouldn't. Um, That consistent space really can become the only space by which we invite God into our lives. But really, God wants to be a part of our whole day, our whole life. And so creating little touch points, creating little reminders, whether it's a, um, an alarm that goes off on your phone or a reminder or, you know, sometimes what I would do is I'd put a little mark on my hand. So every time I would see that mark, it, I would remind myself to bring my thoughts back to God and invite him into that moment. But whatever it is that you want to do, a really, really great way to grow in faith is by learning and training yourself to bring your thoughts and your mind back to the Holy Spirit, back to inviting God into your life and into this moment. Because really the only moment you can offer God is right now. You can't go back in the past and change, and you don't live in the future. So there's no way to invite him into a place that you're not in. And so really the only thing that we can offer God right now is this moment. And so reminding ourselves of that and inviting the Holy Spirit to speak and give us his eyes um, in our everyday lives can open up opportunities for us to to experience what he's saying, what he's speaking, maybe a word of encouragement for a coworker or a classmate or that person that you pass by down the hall. Um, there have been several times that people have joined Kingdom Movement simply because I felt a prompting in my heart to say, hey, maybe I should talk to this person. And then I had a choice to ignore that. I had a choice to shove that down and say, ah, that's uncomfortable, or whether this person rejects me, or whether this person says no, or whether this person thinks I'm just this weird guy on campus talking to them. But regardless, the result I've come to learn is not on me. It's about being faithful. It's about saying yes, Jesus, in those moments. And the more that we say yes to those Holy Spirit moments throughout our day, the more that we'll begin to distinguish God's voice, the more he speaks, or at least the more we learn to hear when he's speaking to us. 
And uh, really, it's us who clog up our ears to the Holy Spirit's voice. It's never the Holy Spirit that withdraws his voice from us. Uh, and so we can begin to experience more and more and more God moments simply because we become more aware of them because we're inviting the Holy Spirit in. So the other aspect of this too is like finding others that want to run in the same direction. It's really hard to grow in anything, right? When you're doing it solo, like human beings are not made to live in isolation, but a lot of times we isolate ourselves. We surround ourselves with people who aren't wanting, who aren't running in the direction that we actually want to go. And sometimes that's not our fault. Sometimes we just literally feel like we can't find people that want to run in the same direction as us. So we just find the people that accept us, right? Or at least make us feel welcome. And so I think one, for Kingdom Movement, this is a challenge for us to make sure that we are constantly a community that is willing to accept others on the journey, right? No matter where they're at, um, simply because we run with those who often accept us, right? We, and we fall typically to the com- lowest common denominator, meaning, you know, as human beings without accountability, without community, we will likely take the easy road. We will likely take the easy way out, um, do the bare minimum, but with community, with others holding us accountable, with people who want to run to a higher standard, we are more likely to push ourselves to say, no, I'm not just going to look at that again just because it's easier than fighting temptation. Or no, I'm not just going to blow up and get angry again. I need to learn how to fight my anger because I don't want to hurt the people that I love and, and so on and so forth. So finding people that want to run in the same direction is vital to our our ability to grow and not just because of the encouragement that is a huge part of it um, but also for the the accountability and the vulnerability and the willing to allow others to see our true lives our true selves so that they can help bring correction because all of us at the end of the day whether you're Jake or Vanessa or one of our student leaders or brand new to a group we all have things in our hearts that need change. We all have things that Jesus needs to speak and breathe his life over and help us. You know, even just a few moments ago, um, I got a little bit snappy at Vanessa and, you know, I'm just reminded again by the Holy Spirit, like you made an assumption and you didn't give her space to speak and you do that more than you should. And, you know, you just realize like, yeah, there's still so much in my own heart. Um, the Holy Spirit, I need your help. I need you to reveal this through other people. And if we ever get to the place where we think we're done, where we're accomplished, where we don't need other people, we're too mature for this kind of community, then we're in a really dangerous spot because we all need community. We constantly need it. There's not a place where we've, quote unquote, arrived, but all of us need um, to have that continued space where there are other people encouraging us, pushing us, challenging us in a healthy way um, to grow and be more like Jesus. So find others who want to run in that direction. And there are others, you know, maybe they're not your best friend. Maybe you um, personality wise don't always click with them as well as maybe you'd like. But part of the family of God, just like our real families is when they're family, they're family. You don't just get to get rid of them because they're inconvenient or annoying or um, wasteful or have habits that really, you know, rub you the wrong way. Family is family, and um, we really have to learn to to live and love and encourage and support one another in healthy ways, you know, obviously not being taken advantage of, but learning how to run in the same direction um, with people that are different than us and also people who we get along with as well. So lastly, and this kind of ties in with some of this too, is um, with community, there are kind of, I believe, three really important things that we need. We need vulnerability all of us, every single one of us, I don't care if you're the hardest guy on the planet, and there's plenty of y'all in Botswana, I know y'all, um, it doesn't matter, it, all of us need a space to be vulnerable, to be, and when I say vulnerable, I mean to be really authentically who we are, and again, what I mean by that is what we're struggling with, what's really hard for us, what really encourages us, what really lights us on fire and excites us, like we need com- community where we have a space where we feel like we can be that person, that person in depth and in full and, and to feel even with all our ugly warts shown 
in all of the things, all of our passions that we're afraid others might dismiss or squash, right? Um, that we have a space where people want to be with us, want to run beside us, want to encourage us and love us, even in the midst of all those things, the, the bad, but also that see the good and call those things out and encourage them, not just diminish them or cut us down as if we're in a competition to, to see who, who can prove that they love God the most. Like that is by no means what Jesus is interested in. And really scripture is all full of not thinking of yourself too highly, not you know showing mutual affection and unity and love. And I think part of that is encouraging each other in each other's gifts and strengths and seeing that in other people and verbalizing it not just you know keeping it in our heart oh i don't want that person to grow prideful but many of us need encouragement many of us need voices that see the good in us and call it out and speak life over us because you know sometimes we are our own worst enemy and when other people see in us the things that maybe we don't always see in ourselves That can be a place of encouragement and hope. And that's what vulnerability is about. The second one is confession. We have to have space, (coughs) excuse me, where we can openly admit and say, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm going through. This is what's tempting me. This is where I feel like I'm failing. This is the lies that I feel like are dominating my mind. Confession is vital to moving on. It's vital to healing. It's vital to overcoming isolation. It's vital to understanding that we are not alone, that our temptations, our sins, our failures are not um, unique to us, but it's common to all people and manifests itself in different ways. And even if this person doesn't struggle with what you struggle with, they have their own struggle. And I think through confession in community, we really confession creates hope it creates freedom it's like a opening a fresh window in a dusty house like it breathes in new life because we realize by holding on to our brokenness really we're letting it infect us even more to dominate our thoughts and really you know jesus is not interested in you continually beating yourself up about your failure but releasing it to him and allowing his his grace and his mercy to create space for new life to grow Rather than filling the garden of your heart with bitterness, with regret, with with doubts. Um, and so confession is a place that we can release those things, open up the windows of our hearts, and let God's fresh wind and fresh air to come in. And lastly, we need accountability. We need a space for people to hold us accountable. And accountability is really all about, are there people in our lives that have full you know, access to, to bring correction, to bring truth, to speak love over us. And now we don't need to be accountable to everybody. Not everyone has our best intentions in mind, but there are people in our lives, in our circles, that we know love us for who we are, not for what they can get, not for what they can, um, you know, manipulate out of us. And if you feel like you don't have that, it's vital that you find someone that can that does provide that and that does take trust that takes vulnerability that takes all these things that we're talking about that's not easy like none of this is easy otherwise everyone would do it um but it is vital that we find at least one person that we really can be accountable to 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 allow them to speak over our lives and and call out the things in us that need to be changed and hold us to our word hold us to the commitments that we've made Um, so that we can become, again, more like Jesus. That is the aim here, is to to grow in faith, to grow in trust, to grow, to become like the master who we we are apprenticing our lives under. So those are kind of the main things that I wanted to hit up. There are many, many other things that we could talk about, about growing in love, about growing in patience, all these individualistic kind of qualities of gentleness and kindness that um, all of us need to inhabit, but for some of us, we need to grow in some of them more than others. Some of you really don't struggle with patience, but you do struggle with, you know, maybe being a kind person. I don't know how those two uh, <laughs> sort out or differ, but um, or hospitality or whatever it is, learning how to let go of, of always viewing things as yours, right? Possessiveness and understanding that others can uh, can have space to, to use your things or whatever it might be. You know, all of us have things that we have to grow in, but I just want to give a few of these tips, um, a few of these suggestions of how you can begin to grow in your faith, what are some steps that you can do, and I think starting here, 
um, the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you in those other specific areas that maybe he desires you to grow in. And that's where the Holy Spirit is vital to all of this, is really what I love about God is he doesn't, you know, ask us to change everything in our lives all at once. Otherwise, I think we would be very, very overwhelmed. Um, But through process, through growth, through community, through truth, through recognition, the Holy Spirit does begin to peel back layer and layer and layer and layer and layer and reveal um, the things in our hearts and our minds um, that do need to change, that need to be formed by Him. And uh, we invite Him into that space to breathe His new, creative, hope-filled, love-filled life into us. Well, guys, I hope some of this has helped you on your journey. I hope it's given you some tools um, and some practical advice to find the people that you need in your life to help encourage you and to, to be consistent. Do the work and invite the Holy Spirit into your everyday. All right, guys, catch you next episode. Hey, guys, this is Jake. If you are currently a university student on a campus in Botswana, we want to extend an invitation to you to get plugged into a discipleship group. So if you're interested, if that's something you want to do, if you want to begin to be a part of this family we call Kingdom Movement, we would encourage you to go into this episode's bio. There should be a link to our Instagram page. You can send us a message, and we will make sure to connect you at a time and a place that works best for you in your schedule for school. But we don't want you to miss this opportunity to get plugged in and a part of what God is doing on the university campuses here because we believe that you're a vital piece to what God wants to do to bring his kingdom, his wholeness, and his healing to the nation of Botswana and to the university specifically. So reach out to us today, guys, if that's something you're interested in. All right, thanks.